was the week before Christmas, and I do not have time for any of this. Right, so backstory. This is a pretty busy week for me, getting uploads ready for the holidays and taking part in some charity streams organized by my friend Icy Richard. Check out the VODs if you missed them, by the way, I assume that they were a ton of fun. So I needed a little bit of a softball topic for this week's episode, something that I could spend only an hour or so researching involving some easy bit of math or science that I could impart onto you. Bada bing, bada boom, we're done. And so, after a bit of browsing, I stumbled upon a Bulbapedia article on Pokemon personality values. Uh, great, it's got some math, it's pretty interesting, potentially useful, and the article is very short. And then, in my effort to fully understand this topic, this article led me to another, and 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 another, help me! All right, we locking in. A personality value is a unique number generated for each Pokemon that determines everything about it. Sort of. The precise role and function of the personality value changes from game to game, but in essence, it's what makes this Rattata different from this Rattata. So, how does it work? Whenever you encounter a Pokemon, the game will generate a random 32-digit number. Except, that number won't look like this, it'll look like this. Uh, yeah, you know all those number things you keep hearing about, you're not going to need them today. Binary is a unique counting system, much like the one that you're probably familiar with. And in fact, it works in pretty much the exact same way, except instead of being base 10, it's base 2. In a base 10 system, we have 10 distinct characters that represent different amounts, and for numbers greater than 10, we use multiple symbols, with each one being worth 10 times more than the one to its right. So, a 1 by itself is just 1, but a 1 in the second position is 10. So, take the number 42. This is really just saying that you have 4 10s and 2 1s. Add them together, and you get 42. Binary works in the exact same way, except it only has two symbols, usually a zero and a one, and each one is worth two times more than the one to its right. So instead of a ones, tens, hundreds, and thousands place, you have a ones place, a twos place, fours, eights, sixteens, and so on. So, take the number 101010. In binary, this represents 01s, 12, 04s, 18, 016s, and 132 for a total of 42. And thus is your 40 second explanation of an entirely new counting system. So, this is the way that personality values understand numbers. And in fact, this is how the entire Pokemon game, or any video game, or any computer understands numbers. And why do they use such a strange counting system? Well, it's quite simple. It's because they hate you and wanted to make it needlessly confusing on purpose. And I guess some like good engineering decisions too, I don't know. No, in reality, the oldest computers encoded information using physical switches that could be turned on or off. And since a switch only has two possible states, it makes sense to use a base two system. And modern computers effectively do this exact same thing, only way more complicated. Since binary can be represented by abstract symbols or physical mechanisms, each character in a binary number isn't referred to as a numeral or digit. Instead, one character is called a bit. Put 8 bits together and you get a byte. Put 50 billion bytes together and you get Elden Ring. A Pokemon's personality value is made up of 4 bytes, or 
32 bits that are randomly generated when you first encounter a Pokemon. And they can be anything from all zeros to all ones and everything in between. That means that there are a total of 4,294,967,296 possible personality values. So, what's the point of them? Well, that question's a bit tricky to answer because it changes a lot, but let's start by looking at generations 3 and 4 when they were first introduced. The most influential bite is perhaps the fourth one. This bite has two main roles. The first is in determining a Pokemon's gender. A Pokemon like Meowth has an equal chance of being male or female. But the game can't just flip a coin to see which one you get, even though it does literally have a feature where it actually flips a coin, but no, for this, it has to use binary. If we look at the last bite, it can be any combination of eight bits. We know that all zeros will be the lowest possible value at, well, zero, and all ones will be the highest possible value at 255. Well, doing some quick math, we can find that the midway point between these two is 127, or zero, one, 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 one. So, the game is programmed in such a way that if the last byte of Meowth's personality value is less than 127, it will be female. Otherwise, it will be male. Simple as that. Except for a small math problem. Of these 256 possible personality values, 127 will be less than 127, while 129 will be greater than or equal to. That means that, if you want to get technical, a Meowth actually has a 50.39% chance of being male, and a 49.61% chance of being female. And the same is true for every Pokemon with an equal ratio. Why they didn't just bump up this threshold by one to get an even match is beyond me, but what about Pokemon without an even distribution. Well, with this system, achieving different ratios of male to female per species is pretty easy. You just have to change the threshold you're comparing it to. Each Pokemon species has one of eight gender thresholds selected to achieve different ratios. And if the last byte of a Pokemon's personality value is less than the gender threshold for that species, it will be female. So for an all-male species like Hitmonchan, the threshold is set to zero. So it's literally impossible to be lower than that, and the opposite is true for all female species. And this holds true for all Pokemon, with one exception. Genderless Pokemon like Magnemite have a gender threshold of all ones, or 255. If the game detects this threshold, then it doesn't matter what their personality value is, it will always display as genderless. In case any of you were in doubt that gender was a construct, we've literally just constructed it. However, we're not done with this last bite yet. There are certain Pokemon that can have multiple abilities. For example, Meowth can have either Pickup or Technician. In every case of Pokemon with multiple abilities, with the exception of hidden abilities, we'll get to that later, there are only a max of two possible options, and they are always both equally likely. Because of that, we don't need to do any fancy comparisons or thresholds, we can just look at the last bit of the last bite. If it's zero, then that Pokemon will have the first ability, and if it's one, it'll have the second. Now, interestingly, that means that a Pokemon's gender and ability are linked in a way, determined by the same piece of data. Now, you may think, well, sure, that's technically true, but it shouldn't really matter. I mean, the ability is determined by the last bit in the ones space, so it's not like it's gonna send you over the threshold or anything. And normally, that would be true. But remember that slight imbalance in the gender ratios from before? In a species like Meowth, with an even gender distribution, both male and female Meowths 
have an odd number of possible personality values. That means that it's impossible to split them perfectly in half, which results in different genders being ever so slightly biased towards one ability or another. A male Meowth will have a 50.39% chance of having Pickup, while a female Meowth will have a 50.38% chance of having Technician. Now, this only applies to Generations 3 and 4. Generation 5, things get a little more complicated because they gave some old Pokemon new ability options, but didn't want Pokemon transferred in to suddenly get their abilities changed, and it gets super complicated. I uh, really don't understand it, so we're just going to pretend that it doesn't exist for now. Great. So, now we should have some idea of how personality values encode information, and how that information determines a Pokemon's characteristics. I'm just left with one question. What the heck does any of this have to do with a Pokemon's personality? Well, it turns out, very little, but it does determine your Pokemon's nature, which is I mean, kind of the same thing, I guess. This one's a bit more complicated, but basically, the game takes a Pokemon's entire personality value and does the binary equivalent of dividing it by 25. It's then left with some remainder, zero for a number that 25 goes into evenly, or some number between 1 and 24 for those that don't. That leaves you with 25 possible remainder options, which, hey, is the exact number of possible natures in the game. Now, I know, any discussion about binary encoding and PMOD functions is absolutely riveting, but the fourth and final major factor that the personality value determines is perhaps the most exciting. Shininess. In a previous video, I said that a Pokemon game would compare a Pokemon's personality value to your trainer ID, and if they match, your Pokemon would be shiny. Well, as it turns out, that's probably about 20% true. In reality, whether or not a Pokemon is shiny is determined by three numbers. Your trainer ID, which is a two-byte binary number that you can find in decimal form on your trainer card, a secret trainer ID, a second hidden number that was introduced to reduce the chances of a traded Pokemon being recognized as originally belonging to you if you happen to have the trainer ID as someone else, and the Pokemon's personality value. Basically, the game compares your trainer ID and secret ID to the first and second half of the Pokemon's personality value to see if they match, but it does it in the most bizarre way possible. It uses a function called an exclusive or function, which basically just compares each number bit by bit. If two bits in the same position are the same, the result becomes a zero. If they're different, it becomes a 1. Instead of just comparing the trainer ID to the first half and the secret ID to the second half, they first compare your trainer ID to your secret ID to get a new binary number. They then compare that to the second half of your personality value to get yet a new number, and then compare that to the first half of the personality value, and if that value is less than 8, your Pokemon will be shiny. In Generation 6, they increase the shiny odds, so they change the threshold to 16. Because you end up with a 2-byte number, there are 65,536 possible numbers resulting in shiny odds of exactly 1 in 8,192 in Generations 3 through 5, and 1 in 4,096 in Generation 6 onward. Make sense? As far as I can tell, this weird method was used so that shiny Pokemon can be as random in their abilities and stat spreads as regular Pokemon. In Generation 2, they were calculated using a Pokemon's DVs, which were basically the predecessor to IVs, meaning that it was impossible to have a perfectly statted shiny Pokemon, but that is an entirely different conversation for another day. Those are really the four main things that a personality value dictates, but there are a few fun 
extra things here and there that seemed to be the result of some lowly programmer at Game Freak in 2001 who wanted to screw around with some crazy new system instead of doing whatever work they were actually supposed to do that day. For example, did you know that each of the four bytes are used to determine the exact coordinates of Spinda's spots? The lower four bits are the X coordinate, while the higher four are the Y coordinate measured from the top left corner of the spot. Because the whole personality value is used to determine these spots, there are technically as many Spinda as there are personality values. But in practice, there are patterns where the spots are off of Spinda's body or on top of one another and therefore not visible, so there are actually a lot less visually distinct patterns, and I will not be calculating how many of those there are because that sounds terrible and don't you dare ask me. No, no, stop, don't scroll down, don't scroll down to the comments section, back on me, back on me. Oh, uh, here, I'll distract you with another fun fact. Did you know that the last two bits of each byte are used to determine which unknown letter you get? Just combine these bits into a new byte, do the same division method that we did with the natures only with 28 this time to get distinct remainders for all 26 letters of the Roman alphabet plus an exclamation mark and a question mark. Or, did you know that Generations 3 and 4 had a whole Pokemon size mechanic that was almost completely invisible? The game uses a much more complicated version of the shiny PMOD function that incorporates a Pokemon's IV values to get an exact size to the tenth of an inch for every one of your Pokemon. Now there is no visual indication of any of these sizes, nor do they affect the gameplay in any way outside of one NPC per game who will give you like an elixir or something. Kind of worthless, but hey, they did bring this feature back in Legends Arceus, or rather, an updated homage to it, where Pokemon actually do appear physically larger or smaller in the overworld. It's good to know that they were brewing that stupid Buizel quest 20 years ago. And there you have it, a full explanation of Pokemon's personality value. Before this video, you may have looked at something like this and just seen a random jumble of numbers. But now, you can look at this and tell me every single thing about that Pokemon. Except, you know, what the actual Pokemon is. Or any of its stats. Or its gender without knowing the gender threshold. Or whether or not it's shiny because you don't know anything about the original trainer that it belongs to. And also, you can't actually view any of these numbers in-game, so there's no way that you'd actually be able to see this to begin with. But, hey, on the off-off chance that this is an unknown, you can say, for 100% certainty, that it's a Q. Alright, and Richard, I know I missed you in the beginning, so you didn't get to do your whole bit, so, uh, for the last time this year, Richard, hit that desk, okay? We don't have time. We gotta get this thing edited and wrapped. Stat, all right? Chop, chop, chop. No time for bits. And a massive thank you to all my patrons, including Alakazam, Aspo102, Big Dog Tie for to win, Sidian, Gremlin the Goblin, Sherry and Mark, The Boss Killer 94, Tricks of Crows, and Captain Kirby.